I've mentioned a couple of times that it's possible to knit much bigger stitches to make cable crossings easier or more decorative. And in this case, I'm going to do so manually. I'm going to bridge, hold needles. I'm gonna bridge up to the point where I want a really large stitch. And then I'm going to knit this stitch back manually all the way back against the rail so that it's a really huge stitch. And then I'm going to hold the bridge back up my carriage and return the needles on the other side to upper work position to bridge my way out of the row. Now I've got one large stitch right here that I'm going to cross to the front because I want it to show and then cross the other three behind it. And that's exactly what's been done with this fabric to create these really large decorative stitches that are still a cable, but you don't get a sense of cable. You get more of a decorative effect out of it. And the same thing was done here to create stitches that would be big enough to add beads. Rather than manually knitting needles back to enlarge the stitch size, it's also possible to use the carriage itself and to use bridging to increase the stitch size on some of the stitches. Now, if I want to cross a three by three cable here in the middle of the work, I need to decide which stitches will show and which ones will not show. In other words, the ones that are on the back of the fabric. So if I know that I'm going to cross the right stitches and then the left, the right stitches should be normal size stitches that will show on the front of the work. The enlarged stitches will be these on the left, which won't show. So I'm going to hold the enlarged, the to be enlarged stitches and everything to the left of them. And I'm going to knit one row to the left and then hold the bridge and the first half of the cable needles and then back up the carriage. And then the next three needles are the ones that I said I want to enlarge. So I'm going to return those to upper work position and increase my stitch size up to about a nine. I'm going to knit across just those three needles. They've got a much larger stitch now than the others. And then I'm going to back up the carriage, drop my stitch size back down to five, and knit my way out of the row. So right here, I've got three enlarged stitches and three normal stitches. So when I cross this cable, I want to make sure that these on the left, the enlarged stitches, will be on the back of the fabric. So I'm gonna take the three from the right, move them over to the left. These are the ones we'll see. And the three from the left easily cross over to the right and are hidden on the back of the fabric. And then I would knit six rows before my next repeat. If I were going to cross the other way so that these were on the front and these should be the enlarged stitches, the procedure's a little bit different. I'm going to hold the entire cable. And of course, I'm beginning them both here with the carriage on the right. You can begin anywhere you want. I'm going to knit my bridge only. Back up the carriage and change my stitch size to nine. Enlarge the three stitches. Hold them, back up the carriage and drop my size back down to five. And then I will place in upper work the second half of the cable and the entire bridge to the left of it. Now when I cross this cable, the stitches on the left are the normal size stitches. They should show. And the stitches on the right are the ones that I'm going to hide on the back of the fabric. They're only enlarged in order to make the crossing that much easier. With a wool like this, it probably wouldn't matter that much, but with a cotton or a silk or a linen, a yarn that hasn't got a lot of stretch, you'll find that this helps an awful lot. Now, if we look at the back of this fabric, you might be able to see that those stitches are larger, as were these down here. But on the knit side of the fabric, they don't show at all. 
and uh, you got the advantage of the increased stitch size and the easier crossing. Now, if I wanted to cross a really big cable, like a four by four or a five by five, you need two things. You need tools to do it with, and you may be able to do it by just managing two tools in each hand. So you could get five stitches here and five on another tool. Or you may um, be able to find specialty tools. My website has four and five prong tools for mid-gauge machines and um, also four, four and five prong tools for chunkies and five prong tools for standard gauge. So the tools are available. In order to cross some really wide cables like these 4x4 four four cables, just enlarging the stitch size is probably not going to be enough. These stitches actually have some extra rows added to them so that where they sit on the front, they're lifted out from the surface of the fabric a little more dramatically. And what I need to do first is decide which stitches will be on the front of the fabric because unlike the increased stitch size, I want the extra rows that I'm going to put in to show on the front. So if I decide that these four cross first, I'm going to hold the other half of the cable and all of the bridge needles to the left of it and knit one row across. And then I'm going to hold the bridge. I've got one row on the right half of the cable. Now I've got two rows on those needles. And when I knit the third row, it will also knit across the left half of the cable and the bridge. Now let me return some of these needles on the right so that you can clearly see what we've got here. There you go. You can see that there are one, two, three rows only on these four needles. All of the others have just one row. So those extra rows should help that cable to really pop to the knit side and help it cross more easily. So I'm going to remove both sets of four. The extra rows are moved over first so that they will show on the knit side of the fabric. They moved quite easily. And then the four rows, the four stitches, excuse me, that go on the back of the cable are moved next. And you'll see when I push these needles up, they're close, but we've seen worse with just some of the three stitch cables. So I'm not too worried about that. And then I'm going to knit. Over there, and let's do the same thing again. So I'm gonna hold the left half of the cable and the left bridge. Move up my edge claws. And then I'm going to knit one row across the bridge and the right half of the cable. It has one row, two, the third row knits right to the end of the row. And obviously in this case, I'm only doing the one cable, but you could easily bridge from one to the next right across an entire fabric. Start with one. So here comes the first four. Again, with the extra rows so that it really pops to the front of the fabric and the four normally knitted stitches will go right on the back. And again, just for safety, I move those back to guarantee that they can't grab each other. back of the fabric looks the same. The front, you don't even see those extra rows, but it keeps the cable from tightening back up on itself. And you get a much more three-dimensional cable, more similar to hand knit than we usually see coming off of a machine.